church that didn't regard what the Old Testament really was actually trying to uh, 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 show or present, they had their own laws. And so if you would just uh, disobey the smallest law, they would come after you. Amen. And then they would basically try to handcuff your worship, and not only that, but to bring legal action against you. Because you fail to obey those what I call close quartered, basically, categories of the law. Uh -huh. And so they asked Jesus, is it lawful uh, to heal on the Sabbath day? And they felt like that, they, they, that these categories were so strict and the law was so uh, uh, in, in, uh, enforced so that that, that, that whatever you fail to do, basically, you had to give an account for it. Uh -huh. And there were some areas in which they would basically, I would say, circumvent the law or uh, those circumstances in order that you might be able to do things on the Sabbath, but it had to basically involve a life or death situation. Amen. And so they looked at this man who had a withered hand and they decided within themselves that this is not desperate enough, amen, for Jesus to circumvent the, the Sabbath. In other words, he can wait to the next day to get his healing. Yeah. And what they failed to realize, in my opinion, was that the Sabbath was important, but there was more value on doing what was right and morally good than obeying the Sabbath. Amen. Y'all praying with me out there. Yeah. Amen. And, and, and so, and so the Jesus is here now is in the, the circling the wagons. They, they got him exactly where they wanted because the Bible says what they were seeking for, they was looking for something where they could bring an accusation against you. Amen. I discovered also something else in this text. You know, most of the times, my brothers and sisters, when the enemy really comes against you. Guess what he does? Amen. He attacks your strength and not your weakness. Now Jesus had many virtues, amen, in, in, in his ministry. He had many, many, many powerful experiences and events in his work. And notice they go exactly to his strength because he had the power to heal. We just seen that in this dreadful election that we all just went through. Yeah. Amen. If you notice, amen, the opposition, when it went against Barack Obama, they did not attack his weakness, they went at his strength. That's right. That's right. And the reason being was if they could discredit his strength, tear down his strength, then basically they got him. But I'm so glad that I can say this morning that the news is good. That if you're a child of God, the enemy might come at your strength right. to try to discourage you or even tear down that what you have spent years building up. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. But when the Lord has his hands in the situation, yeah. All right. All right. amen, he'll take what was meant for bad and turn it into good. Yeah. Amen. I do feel like preaching here this morning. Yeah. And, and so Jesus here is is now he's, he's, he's been attacked. Uh, they're really not concerned so much about the Sabbath. Amen. They really want to try to find something where they can basically bring an accusation against him and so they can cease his work and public ministry. And so they ask the question, Lord, is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath? Amen. Is it the right thing to do? Is it basically the proper thing? And, and, and not, another thing I want you to discover in this is Jesus always have absolute authority. Yes. Amen. To invoke any interpretation, whether it be law or your will or anything else. The final authority rests in Jesus. Yes. Especially when he has a hand in it. And sometimes we have a problem of interpreting the situation. Amen. And our interpretation sometimes is wrong. But when the Lord shows up, 
his interpretation supersedes whatever we might think about it. Help me somebody. And so here he says, and that's what he was doing, he basically was interpreting the, really, the law of the Sabbath. Amen. And we're going to find this because, uh, and, and by the way, those are old, old, no good physical, I would say religious figureheads. They, you know, they always had a way of making things right for themselves. As long as they benefited, everything was okay. And, and in fact, if you really want to go a little bit further than that, there were some instances where you could profane the Sabbath, amen, and not be guilty Amen. Or profaning it. For an example, sometimes, amen, the priest was allowed to do their work because they had to be work in the temple. Preparing themselves for worship. And they could do it without profaning, amen, the Sabbath. But these tried to really point, point Jesus to a point, uh, or to pinpoint him to a point where they could just take that which was just not really relevant, amen, and make him look bad. I'm getting ready to take my, my seat now, amen. I'm getting ready to turn the corner because we've got to get out early. I want y'all to get service at 4 o'clock. And so he says, is it lawful to heal this man? Can this man truly be healed on the Sabbath and basically do it without breaking the law? And Jesus now takes... I call it his own psychology. Amen. And what it does, he reverses it. He tells them, says, now, I want you to think about what you just asked me in this manner. Amen. If you had a sheep and the sheep fell into the pit on the Sabbath, I'm paraphrasing, what would you do about it? Amen. And I like that that that, 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 that analogy. I like that that question that Jesus poses because now what he's doing he's getting into something that was dear to the individual and if you uh, had sheep and cattle that means you had property amen and when you got property that is things that is something that is of value to you and so he says now if the sheep falls into the pit on the Sabbath do you have anything on the book Amen. Do anything uh, falls in those categories that you have listed, amen, in order that you might not disobey the Sabbath? Is there anything in those categories that would allow you to get the sheep out of the pit? Amen. And I notice there's silence there. Amen. I notice now probably there's some head dropping. There's some head scratching because Jesus himself was the master, amen, of wisdom. In other words, he had the gift of knowledge. Jesus could take a situation and turn it quickly, amen, and let you see yourself in your own mess where you're trying to, amen, get somebody else in their, in their mess. Y'all don't want to help me preach. And so he says, is there anything on the book? That will let you get the, the sheep out of the pit. And then Jesus said now. Just in case. If you're not serious about it. I got another side I want to present to you. If the sheep can be lifted. Out of the pit. On the Sabbath. Amen. Amen. And if you can basically. Uh, let the priest perform his work. On the Sabbath. You're so wrapped up in religion and your religiosity that, that you're just basically going to overlook that which is small and, and get engulfed in worship more so than doing what is right and the right thing. I want you to know that the sheep is more important, amen, than, than the, excuse me, that the, the man who has the withered hand is more important than the sheep. In other words, it's more important than your worship. Because after all, the Bible says he has a wielded hand. And then we see that Jesus goes on to expand his authority in interpreting the Sabbath. He 
He tells a man, he says, stretch forth thine hand. Now notice now, he's exercising his authority. Not only has he interpreted the Sabbath, but now he lets the crowd know they had, he has authority over the Sabbath. And let me tell you something in my closing. If you come to church simply on Sunday, amen, just to be seen in worship, or you come basically because it's simply Sunday, then you have missed the mark. Amen. Because when Jesus has a hand, not only in your situation, but in your worship. Amen. You can worship him not only on Sundays, you can worship him on Monday. Can I get a witness? In fact, in fact, I'm so convinced about that statement that, 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 that I'm thoroughly convinced that I don't have to wait Sunday morning for the Lord to have a hand in this worship. And, and this thing called serving him, you don't have to wait the Sunday morning. Amen. You can get up early in the morning. Amen. And if you got the right attitude in, in your worship, you got the right attitude in your situation, you will discover that the Lord will put his hands in your situation, not only on Sunday, but also on Monday. Somebody ought to help me preach this thing. Amen. Because if you're going to restrict Jesus to Sabbath day worship, then you miss the mark. Amen. If he's only going to bless you on the Sabbath, then what about tomorrow when the hell happens? Get on your track. Well, what about when the enemy comes against you like a flood and there is no worship setting like you have now? Amen. But when the Lord has a hand in this experience, that's why you can praise him. Not only on Sunday, but you can praise him on Monday. Amen. Can I get a witness here? See, see, right about now, you ought to realize that, that you might not get sick on Sunday. Amen. You, you might be doing good today and tomorrow the hellhounds might get on your track. But, but it's good to know that not only does he have a hand in your sickness on Sunday, but he's got a hand in your sickness on Wednesday. Then the third to Friday, Saturday, you can call us. Why I feel like that? I feel like preaching. Wait a minute. I feel like preaching him. So the Lord said to the, to the, Jews, the, the man says, said, rise up and stretch forth your hand. And the Bible says that he healed the man's hands on the seventh day. In other words, he was made whole on the Sabbath. And the Bible says that when Jesus exercised his authority, when he showed them really what the interpretation of the Sabbath was all about, the Bible says they went out and took counsel against Jesus how they might destroy him. Amen. But let me tell you something. The last time I checked the record, Jesus cannot be defeated by his enemies. So if you are a child of the king, you are walking by faith and not by sight. You have your hands in the master's hand. Amen. When you get ready to go through, through. When you get ready to go through issues. When you get ready to go through when you can't find your way. I want you to reach back and tell yourself, even though my hands might be with me, even though my arms might be too short, but if Jesus has a hand in it, I can come out victorious. Oh, y'all don't want to hear me? Do, do anybody know that, that when the Lord's hand is in it, amen, I don't care how bad it looks, I don't care how bleak it might seem, when the Lord has your hand. Amen. Everything is going to be alright. So I want you to enjoy your Sabbath. I want you to worship Him on your Sabbath. Amen. But let Him interpret what the Sabbath really is. Because the Bible teaches me that those who worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. Yourself and tell yourself and encourage yourself that when God has your back and Jesus has your hand, He has control of the situation.
them up. If, if your worship, which is Sunday, Saturday, whatever, determines the outcome of your situation, then you have truly, amen, failed to get the full spectrum of what this thing is all about. So that's why you ought to say, Lord, amen, bless me not only on my, in my Sabbath, but bless me while I'm going to my job. Put your hands in the situation while I'm going to work. Put your hands in the situation while the enemy is trying to destroy me. And I'll tell you, when his hand is showing up in it, good God Almighty, he's going to make everything all right. Amen. Yeah, Y'all see these hands? Amen. Amen. This is, this is a good hand. This, these are hands that you need. Amen. The hand ought to be in the Word. And, and when Try 
Let me see. Out smart is too strong of a word. Out think Jesus. Because we think that this is the way it ought to be. Y'all look at me like you ain't guilty. You're just guilty of sin. And I am too. I, I've, been, I've been down that road. I think that it ought to be done this way. Because this is what I see. But how many know that Jesus has supervision? See, there's a difference in supervision and vision. See, when you got supervision, you can see further than ordinary. And it even gets better when you see it in the spirit. Yeah. When you see it in the in the spirit. See, your ultimate desire not to be, well, satisfied here. What you should be looking for is something better that's out of this world. See, I, I look forward for my worship on Sundays. But I look for that day when I should worship him in the kingdom. Amen. Hallelujah. And so before I get ready to say, go to the church.